So I've, I've spent a lot of time around mobsters and gangsters, interviewing them, having them on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, a lot of times when you ask a mobster when they were active, hey, what do you do for a living? You know, I, I'm, I own a construction business. You know, I own a plumbing business. I own dry cleaners. I own this. When you tell me you're a plumber, you give me red flags. Because to me, you take me to, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's a little bit blurry, your background on what you've done. Just fine. Maybe it's intentional. Maybe it's not. Uh, it, it could go the CIA route. It could be the DIA route. It could be a lot of different intelligences. You know, it's not hard to be associated with them. Uh, and, but you're saying you've never been involved CIA. You've not done anything with DIA. That, that's not something you've done in the past before. I have never been directly employed by any of those companies, alphabet agencies, however you want to title them. But having looked backwards, I question the proximity that I was to them. I may have been some sort of unknown asset is my suspicion. The type of clients that I had are not the type of people that when they get a leak under their sink, they go to the yellow pages and check for the local plumber. So I believe that I was on some sort of an approved list by whom I don't know, but I can tell you that certainly I was involved in peculiar activities 24 hours a day. There were certain clients that could call me 24 hours a day, request which vehicle I showed up in, either my labeled plumbing company van or uh, up to and including a uh, an extremely fast um street racing Camaro. Let's just put it that way. And these clients would dictate when I met them, what vehicle I showed up with, which mansion we were going to. Are these um, names we would recognize? Uh, John Tunney was one of them, owner of the Carlisle Group. John Tunney, owner of the Carlisle Group, a partners with uh, a billionaire that we've had on the podcast before, David Rubenstein. Okay. It's interesting. You're familiar with the Carlisle Group? Of course I am. Yes. I did a lot of peculiar work for the Carlisle Group and their facilities and their personnel. So to unpack peculiar, peculiar work, what does that mean? I would say that I was set up as some sort of getaway driver. That if things went wrong, I was known to be good at that. Getaway from what? Getaway driver from what? Whatever he was doing in that mansion. Did you ever see anything weird where you're like, this is kind of weird what they're working on? I think I saw that all the time. I think so many of the things now in retrospect were extremely peculiar, but it's because of the collected experiences that I have now that I can look back and make that assessment. Um, at the time that things happened, firsthand experience, they seemed a lot more benign. And maybe I was naive, maybe I was young, maybe that's what was being taken advantage of. But looking backwards, yeah, a lot of the facilities that I worked in, a lot of the folks' homes that I was present in, things got weird all the time. I, I, it was not rare that I would be, you know, working at a bar sink in a billionaire's common space. And next thing I know, I would get asked by them, he and his friends, to sit down and engage in whatever conversation they had been involved with. At the time, I didn't think much of it. But in hindsight, that's really weird. You know, it's not often that a bunch of billionaires ask the plumber to sit down and dialogue with them. What's wrong with that? Maybe, maybe they just want to be personal. Maybe, maybe they want to have a conversation with you. Nothing wrong with it at all. You're right. No prejudices. But just in the grand scheme of every other day in that role, it wasn't as common as you would think. It was, it was an out-of-the-ordinary experience. For the most part, in those environments, I was observably invisible. Got it. Like I would think about it, you know, we, we have somebody in my office who comes, he's doing the lights, he's doing the AC, he's doing work and all stuff. He's there, I'll be on conference calls. He can hear what I'm talking about, what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So it could be as simple as that kind of a relationship they had with you, but they trusted you. Fair enough, but it would be different if you were then to engage that tradesman, bring them into your conversation yeah. and start asking their opinion on things. Okay. Okay. Um, Getaway driver, get away from what? I mean, if you, you, to have, you said the Camaro or the company car, right? The company truck. Mm -hmm. You, you un kind of unpack that a little bit, but if you don't mind going a little bit deeper, if I, when I hear getaway, I think about getaway that we're running away from doing something 
uh, 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 you know, illegal underground that I don't want people to know about, and I need to trust somebody that can get us to a different destination so we won't get caught. Am I reading it correctly? Absolutely. So what, is, is, the, what do we get? Who are we getting away from? I guess again, whoever the the mansion was that we arrived at. Basically, I would get a, a call 24 hours a day. Yeah. Mr. Tony could contact me. Uh, I would ask him which vehicle he wanted me to pick him up in, and then when I would pick him up, he would then give me an address to go to. I would wait outside. He would do whatever his business was in the interior. Um, I wish I could tell you, I know there were a couple of times that I did enter with him, but I can't recall them that well, to be honest. Okay. And that was a rarity. He almost never asked me to enter. It was always wait outside. Okay. So let's talk about remote viewing. Okay. Mm -hmm. To the average person, I mean, we see a remote viewing. It's kind of weird. It's tough to explain. It's technical, right? What remote viewing is. But if you don't mind to the average audience, what, what is remote viewing? Remote viewing, people just need to understand, is a skill set, first and foremost, that everybody possesses, similar to the ability to play a guitar. There's nothing keeping you from playing a guitar other than your own desire and level of practice to you know, prove proficiency. Anybody can do remote viewing. Nothing stopping anyone from doing it other than a, a massive amount of folks saying that you know, it can't be done. But the facts of the matter, remote viewing, to put in its simplest definition, is one's ability to get the right answer without any scientific basis on how they got it. It's okay. outside of what our understanding of abilities are, but it, it works. It's been proven time and time again that it is very effective, it's very accurate, and it's is it very by, learnable. Is it used by illusionists? It's used by all sorts of folks. It, it certainly, it could be used by illusionists for sure. Um, there is some semblance of a two-way street to working on this energy level. So um, part of what I'm discussing today and the ability to put thoughts in people's head contemporarily by an abuse of technology was in antiquity an abuse of technique. So adepts of old would have the ability to enter this space and have a thought go into your head. Now there's technologies that do that, and we can put this in the spectrum of, you know, let's say the energies that remote viewers work in. Okay, so uh, brainwashing is not a new thing. Not right? at all. Brainwashing has been around for a while, so if you look at the process of brainwashing, mm -hmm. you'll hear somebody talk about isolation, monopolization, de debilitation, exhaustion, drugs, torture, enforcement of routine, hypnosis, repetition, gaslighting. If I keep repeating it to affirmations, mm -hmm. there's a lot of, you know, uh, 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 effectiveness in repetitive, getting somebody to think positive or negative or weak or you're, you can do this or you need the government. Mm -hmm. Many ways you can do this. It's been going on for a long time, mm -hmm. whether it's Operation Mockingbird you're talking about, or other things. But for you, when you remote viewer, you get hired as a plumber to go to Raytheon, then they upgrade you to Firefight. You have access to pretty much everything while you're there uh, in Antarctica. For the average person that, you know, when you think about Antarctica, this is kind of where I go to. You know, fun facts and strange facts about Antarctica, okay? It's a desert, driest continent on the planet. Uh, very few people live there, 140 permanent residents. It was discovered recently in 1820 by Russian expedition uh, no country owns it. It wasn't named until 1890s. Mostly ice, 90 percent. Holds most of most of the world's fresh water, 60 to 90 percent. It used to be as warm as Melbourne years ago, 40, 50 million years ago, 63 degrees Fahrenheit. Right now it's 128 degrees minus 120 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take. No time zone. There's the only way you can go is north. Has active volcanoes, subglacial lake that flows blood red. Uh, diamond dust floats. Even back in the days, Hitler was fascinated by Antarctica, where he had a passion for the occult, and when he was searching for something in Antarctica, the Nazi Germany's built a station in Antarctica, however, was abandoned some 70-something years ago. So they offer you a job to go to Antarctica. One, how did they find you? Uh, what were they asking you to do? What was your job description, and what did you find when you went there? I found them. Because the economy, you found them. I found okay. them. The economy had tanked so poorly that my business was not doing well, and I was reaching out to find out what was going on. You're living in New York at the time. I was living on Long Island at okay. the time. Correct. They were literally the only person on the planet that would cut me a check at that point. 
Why is that? Just the economy. Okay. I, I was putting out applications and getting no response. This is post 2008, 2009 market yes, tanks, sir. 38%. Yes, sir. Tough times, economy's bad. Got it. Correct. I had two children to feed and was going to take any contract from anyone that was going to cut me a check. I absolutely did not want to go to the South Pole Station. I did not want to spend a winter there. I did not believe you could have functioning plumbing. As a plumbing and heating specialist, I thought this was all like a joke. I couldn't believe what was going on, but I was going to go take the check. Just, I had no fondness for Raytheon. I did a short stint after high school in the United States Submarine Service. I learned what Raytheon is really about, which is killing people. They love making weapons. I mean, that's their bread and butter. So I was pensive about being employed directly by them, and I went regardless. I kept my eyes and ears open. I was like a sponge the entire time that I was there. I knew that they had to be lying about something if Raytheon was involved. And um, lo and behold, after quite a few years, I, I figured out you know what was really going on. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.